Madam Speaker. I call Shine Wu. I stand here to firmly stand against this bill today. Yeah. Let's start with a very, very important point of agreement. All of us here agree that climate change is a problem that needs to be dealt with. However, those of us that have spoken against this bill simply believe that there are better mechanisms of dealing with climate change that doesn't re that, like improving the ETS that doesn't have the pernicious effects on our most vulnerable communities which this bill does. I'm going to talk about two of those. Firstly, I want to talk about how this damages our cru crucial New Zealand industries and secondly how this is incredibly regressive. On to the first. The problem with the target to reduce emissions from the New Zealand energy sector is that it does not specify the industries and the groups that the incidence of this policy will fall onto. Industries like the agric agricultural industry and other very prominent uh, polluters have very strong lobbyists and unions who will resist the government imposing restrictions on their agricultural emissions. And as such, these groups with strong lobbyists and unions will have a greater capacity to stop the government from um, reducing their emission quota. Thus, established industries like the agricultural and energy sector will be able to keep emitting at the expense of more vulnerable industries like our postal, our construction and our transport industries. The important thing to note here is that if these vulnerable industries, um, th these vulnerable industries produce crucial goods and services for the lives of New Zealanders, so if they are handicapped by emissions restrictions, the quality of life for everyday New Zealanders will be diminished massively. Secondly, I want to talk about how this is incredibly regressive. Let's take a couple of examples, right? A, di a disproportionately high proportion of impoverished individuals in New, Zeal in New Zealand live, live on the outskirts of, in places like South Auckland and Porirua or in rural communities, the outskirts of cities. These areas are relatively poorly serviced by public transport. These people need their cars to travel significant distances compared to the rest of the population and will therefore be the group that is hardest hit by the increase in costs of operating a petrol-based car. Furthermore, a disproportionately high proportion of our most vulnerable citizens live in low-quality housing which require wood, coal and gas heating during the winters. If these forms of heating become less affordable, it leads to worse living conditions for our most vulnerable people, which, are unfortunately, which unfortunately comprises of vast major amounts of our Māori, our Pacifica and our rural communities. As Michaela pointed out, we need a catalyst for climate change. It is simply unfortunate that she seems to want a catalyst that detrimentally harms New Zealand's most vulnerable citizens, our rural communities, our Māori and Pacifica communities, and some of our most crucial industries. I urge you to vote against this bill. <laughs> Madam Speaker. I call Henry Young. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, it's a real pleasure to be